Okay, welcome to Chapter 4, Lesson 3 in Social Studies, Native Americans of the Plains. Focus activity, we're going to read to learn. How did the Lakota adopt, adapt the course to their culture? Vocabulary, lodge, prairie, teepee, travoy, acoustic, jerky, and black hills. I have been to South Dakota on a Lakota reservation of the Sioux tribe. So I have a little bit of information. Uh, read aloud. Iron Teeth, a woman from the plains, described how the horse changed the lives of her people. My grandmother told me that when she was young, people themselves had to walk. In those times, they did not travel far or often. But when they got horses, they could move more easily from place to place. Then they could kill more of the buffalo and other animals. And so they got more meat for food and gathered more skin for homes and clothing. The big picture. For thousands of years, Native Americans who lived on the plains of the Middle West, or Midwest, um, lived mostly in villages. Those vill the villages were usually located near rivers where there was plenty of water for farming. The plains people lived in lodges. Lodges are homes made of logs covered with grasses, sticks, and soil. During the summer, the men left the village to hunt buffalo. They return in the fall to harvest their crops. In the 1500s, the Spanish arrived in North America. They brought something that would change the plains people's lives forever, the horse. In this lesson, you will read about the Lakota Sioux, one of the people of the plains from about 1500 to 1800. You will read about how their taming the, of the horse led to major changes in, the way, in their way of life. Life on the Great Plains. The Great Plains are made up of dry prairies that cover much of the Midwest, Middle West. A prairie is a flat or gently rolling land covered mostly with grasses and wildflowers. Summers can be extremely hot. When I was out in South Dakota, the summer was like 100, 100 plus with heat. I think it got up to like 115 some days. And it was so hot that they told us, work 15 minutes and take a 20-minute break. It was not fun. Um, so, and winters can be extremely cold. The lack of rain makes growing corn and other crops difficult except in river areas. Until the 1800, herds of buffalo roamed the Great Plains. They've actually brought a lot of the buffalo back. Um, but the buffalo isn't, um, still not as plentiful as it used to be, right? Um, when they were hunting buffalo, the plains people lived in teepees. Teepees are cone-shaped tents made of animal skins. Some plains people still use teepees today. Jerry Flute says this about the teepee. We live in a very harsh climate. It's not unusual to hear the reporters say it's going to be 85 degrees Fahrenheit below zero with wind chill. 85 degrees Fahrenheit below zero with wind chill. Now, let's talk, let's talk cold, right? Do we go to school at 85 degrees below zero with wind chill? No, our freezing point is 32 degrees Fahrenheit is when we freeze. Yeah, Fahrenheit, it's 32 degrees Fahrenheit is zero degrees Celsius. That's freezing. So they are 32 degrees to zero and then another 85 below that. So that means they're over 100 degrees Fahrenheit colder than freezing wind chill <laughs> i would probably be an ice cube but um i want to say when when we're negative wind chill, i don't remember what our temp is but like when we're in the negative 
teens or tens or something, we don't go to school. They say it's too cold for the buses to run, and they are much colder than that. We would have a snow day. I like it cold. I, I, I like cold. However, I don't like to drive on the ice. Uh, I don't like driving in snow. I don't like driving in ice. I am a wuss. Hello, my name is Miss Richardson, the wuss, sea driver. I don't like driving in ice. I don't like driving in snow. When you have done fishtailing, it's not fun. Your car does this kind of thing. Not fun. Oh, I've been in a car. All right. <clears throat> when it was time to move, the teepee was folded up. Let me see if I can pick, push the picture up a little bit higher. The teepee was folded up and loaded onto a travoy. A travoy is a sled-like device for carrying people. So this is a travoy. So when you were done with the teepee, you took it down. It's kind of like a tent ish you would take it down and they would carry it on a travoy behind the horse what uh, I don't know if they would ride on when you had all your belongings on it um, people use travoys if they're trying to carry somebody and they can't lift them you can actually like if you're in the wilderness and there's been, somebody was in an accident or something and you can't get help into the person you can put them on a travoy and haul them out so instead of it being a horse you could put your body in the v and you can pull them no what i'm saying is is that people have constructed these especially like in the wild west movies they put somebody inside the v part and instead of it being on a horse then they carry them or they can pull them out afterwards. Um, when, is there, there's a person riding in the back of the thing? Yeah, they said, so it was, when it was time to move, the teepee was folded up and loaded on the travoy. A travoy is a sled-like device that's used for carrying people, like this, or belongings, or and belongings. Plains people use the travoy to carry buffalo meat home after a hunt. Before the arrival of the horse, the travoy was often pulled by dogs. It can be pulled by people. Probably a pe person doesn't want to necessarily be pulling it, though, because it's heavy. Taming the horse. By the 1600s, horses that had run away from their Spanish owners roamed freely across the plains. By the 1700s, the Lakota were taming these wild horses and adapting them to their way of life. Many Plains people became expert riders, breeders, and trainers. The most important change the horse brought was in the economy of the Plains people. The buffalo replaced farming as the Lakota's main source of food. So they stopped being farmers, and instead they just ate the buffalo. Um, Many people, many stopped living in permanent settlements. Instead, they moved from one campsite to another to hunt the buffalo. So, do the buffalo hang out in your field? No, they roam around. So, what the Sioux would do, or the Lakota would do, is they would follow the buffalo, hunt the buffalo, and the buffalo was their food. Okay? And, <coughs> excuse me. Native Americans are really good about not just eating the food, the meat. They use every single part of the animal they kill. So if they take the animal, if they took the buffalo, the buffalo hide became clothing or it became part of their teepee. They used every single part of it. They didn't waste anything. The guts of it a lot of times became um, thread to sew stuff with. Yeah, it's gross, but they used everything. Yeah, well, they didn't always take the fur off. Depended, dep it depended. Sometimes they left the fur on because the fur added an extra layer of warmth, right? 
But um, if they were doing the, using it as a teepee, they would scrape the fur off of it. And then they would do the process called tanning, tanning the hide. And then they would use that to, um, and they would sew it together to make their teepees and stuff like that. Tyler. Um, I think the bones were used as like needles to stitch some stuff together. I don't know. I'm not necessarily an expert. I just know some stuff, right? So I guess if you're super interested in it, then you probably will need to do some research. Okay. Um, So it says, so now they have these horses roaming around. Um, so it says by the 1700s, they were t uh, above. Yeah, I just read that. Sorry. Um, so this doll at the right was made from deer skin and horse hair. The plains rider below was using a travoy in the early 1900s. So... This is a picture from the early 1900s of the Travoy, and this was made out of deer skin and horse hair. The Lakota. Uh, this is a buffalo hunt. The buffalo hunt is a painting by Edgar S. Paxson. Shows, hunt, shows hunters using their skill and their knowledge of the horse and the buffalo. The Lakota. The Lakota Sioux who are also known as the Dakota. Wonder how they got South Dakota and North Dakota. Well, if the Lakota is named Dakota, also known as Dakota, North Dakota, South Dakota, the Dakotas will be named after the tribe, right? Um, so Lakota Sioux, also known as the Dakota, lived in the northern part of the Great Plains. The time is 1800. You are about to meet Standing Bear and Red Deer, a young members of the Lakota people. They live in the Black Hills of South Dakota. The Black Hills are, were and still are a sacred area to the Lakota people. Um, we built Mount Rushmore in the, the Black Hills. Do you guys know what I'm talking about, Mount Rushmore? There's a big head of George Washington, a big head of Abraham Lincoln. There's four big heads. We may put our president's heads in a place that's sacred to the Lakota. Do you think that was kind of us? Probably not. A young Lakota boy, Standing Bear, an 11-year-old boy, is at a buffalo hunt with his father and other men from their camp. First, the hunters ride straight into the buffalo herd to create confusion. Then they go after a single buffalo using a lance, bow, and arrow, or rifle. Standing Bear admires the courage and skill it takes to do this. He is only here to help, but someday he will kill his own buffalo. His father cuts out the liver of the buffalo that has just been killed. It is the most nutritious part of the buffalo, so he and Standing Bear eat some of it now. If they cut the liver out of the buffalo and they're eating it, are they eating it cooked? No. That means they're eating it raw. raw. <laughs> um, they say, so they ate some of it and they saved the rest for Standing Bear's mother and sister. After Standing Bear practices riding, someday he would like to become one of the leaders who govern his community. To do this, he must show courage in the face of danger during the buffalo hunt and in battle. Standing Bear knows that the bravest act that he can make in battle is to touch an enemy without killing him. Can you imagine going up to an enemy and going, touch, and then walking away? That's the bravest thing you could do. Now, is the enemy like, oh, thank you for touching me? Is that what they're doing? No. No, if they're your enemy, they're probably out to get you, right? And you're running up going, touch. It's kind of like my niece when she goes, boop, right? 
Kind of reminds me of boop. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. Um, to do this, standing bear would have to use a special weapon called a coup stick. Coup is a French word that means to strike or hit. Standing bear can also bring honor to himself in other ways. Being a good speaker and generosity are other qualities that the Lakota admire. So when we were out there, um, one of, we, when we, we went out to um, help repaint some of the buildings that had been built for the people that were on the reservation. Uh, the reservation is not like the reservation here. Um, because here we have a casino on the reservation, right? Mm -hmm. Casino makes a ton of money. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And so the people that are Native American on the reservation here, are they poor? Not usually, right? Usually they have some kind of wealth. The reservation out there is poor. When I was out there to eat lunch in the middle of the summer because we went out in the summertime we were eating lunch we had to stand in a food line to go through and get cafeteria food and anybody that was uh, any child under 18 and women were allowed to stand in the line and go through the line and get food to eat it's kind of like um, last summer they had food at our school right you could choose to come in and eat the school lunch um, in the in the middle of the day if you could get here right does that make sound familiar you know what I'm talking about that's what we did when I was out there except I'm sure that if you went was it super busy here in the summertime at lunchtime no when I went there were like 20 or 30 people in front of me in lunch line or longer because we were outside standing in the heat waiting to get into the school and the school was not air conditioned. Yeah, you're thinking Miss Richardson did not like that. You are right. I did not like that. All right. Um, so he had this coup stick and he would go up and he'd touch him with the stick or hit him, strike him with a hit or hit him. Um, a young Lakota girl. Red Deer, Standing Bear's oldest, older sister, works hard beside her mother. The hunt is over, but Red Deer's tasks have just begun. As you can see in the diagram on the next page, the buffalo serves many purposes. Thousands of pounds of buffalo meat lie in the field. If the meat is not cut up and cured quickly, it will spoil. Cure means they would have to, do they have refrigerators that could take home a buffalo and put it in the refrigerator? No. Did they have a freezer they could take it home and put it in the freezer? No, they had to do something to preserve the food or the food would rot and spoil. Yeah, so especially in the summertime, right? Red Deer and her mother slice the buffalo meat in thin strips and leave it in the sun, leave it to dry in the sun. The dried meat is called jerky. Have you ever made jerky before? Raise your hand if you've eaten jerky before. It's about what I thought. Sometimes they make pemmican by adding berries and fat to the jerky. So when you add berries and fat, it's pemmican instead of just jerky. Uh, Red Deer's family will eat this food all through the winter. So if they get sick of eating buffalo, can they go to the nearby grocery store and get something else? No, so they're eating the same kind of meat all year. After the buffalo meat is prepared, Red Deer helps her mother make a teepee. The teepee will make about, the teepee will use about 10 buffalo skins. How many skins do you need to make a teepee? 10. Ten. Ten. Well, but can you go out and kill 10 at one time? Well, okay, but let's talk about it. How long, thousands of, is that, didn't it say thousands of pounds? Isn't that what they said about the buffalo? Let me see. 
Thousands of pounds of buffalo meat lie in the field. The buffalo are huge. They're bigger than a cow. They're bigger than an elk. They're huge. Yeah. Yeah. What? Oh, buffalo is definitely bigger than a human. So, thousands of pounds. Can they go out and kill thousands of pounds every single day? No, because it's going to take a long time for them to cut it all up, to make all of the jerky, to do all of the processing and stuff. So, it's a long and tedious process. So... The first, the skins must be cleaned and scraped. Then Red Deer and her mother will cut them and sew them together. Finally, they will stretch the skin over seven, several wooden poles. Tomorrow, Red Deer might go with her mother to search for herbs. Many Native Americans use herbs to cure common sicknesses. The major ingredient in aspirin today, for example, comes from an herb used by many Native Americans to treat illnesses. I know that when we were out there, they showed us, like, certain things you could collect from the grasses and stuff. I think one of the things they showed us that we could pull up was something similar to an onion. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they have different things. They use different things for curing. They use different things for sicknesses. They're to they've learned and they utilize what they have. Yep. Yeah. How to make a teepee about 1800. What are the different steps the plain, plains women are using to make a teepee? First, a buffalo hide is scraped clean to prepare it for making a teepee. So this is the buffalo hide. They have to scrape it clean. Then they have several buffalo hides are sewn together to make the teepee cover. So then they sew several of them together. Then you have buffalo or wooden poles are used to form the TP frame. See the wooden poles used to form the TP frame. Then the buffalo hides are stretched over the poles to create cover the TP. And the nice thing is, is they could have a fire on the inside and it would go up and out the middle part of it so that it didn't get super smoky inside. And it wouldn't burn the hides, yep. Winter count. The Lakota kept track of the time with, ca with calendars called winter counts. Each winter, the Lakota met to choose an important event of the past year. An artist then recorded this event by drawing a symbol or a picture of it on the hide of an animal. Studying winter counts has helped historians understand the history of the Lakota. On this page is a winter count from the 1800s, so that's over 2,000 years ago. What other means do people use to record important events from their past? So, this picture right here, 1853 to 1854, this means many goods were traded. This picture right here is 1833 to 1834, and it means there was a meteor shower. You can kind of see the... You can kind of see the, like, the, what looks like star stuff coming down, stardust, or... Um, this one is one color, one, one with another color, right? So, 1840, 1841... These two handshakes uh, means there's a peace treaty with the Cheyenne, which is another Native American tribe. Uh, this one right here, whoops. This one right here, 1801 to 1802, is there was a smallpox epidemic. 
smallpox epidemic was a big deal, we have shots and vaccines that we can take. They did not at the time. So smallpox would come in and it could wipe out their entire tribe. They did not have... So the, the interesting thing about... Um, The interesting thing about us is we've all kind of went through the pandemic. What happened when our bodies weren't used to what was going on with the pandemic? So we wore masks, right, to help us protect ourselves during the pandemic. Um, and some people still caught COVID, right? Some people have caught COVID after the pandemic because it's still a bug running around. What happens is, is typically we've already been exposed to the majority of the bugs that we have going on. If your friend in the classroom gets sick, does everybody usually get sick? No. Yeah. Not usually everybody gets sick. Sometimes a few people might get sick, but it's not usually everybody gets sick because everybody has different kinds of immune systems. We've all been exposed to different kinds of bugs right? You know what I'm talking about? Not like little bugs, but like virus bugs. And so we have the ability to kind of combat it. Well, the Native Americans weren't exposed to white people until the day they were. So white people show up, white people have been exposed to each other's bugs, but have Native Americans been exposed to their bugs or viruses? No. So we show up and we make the Native Americans, or we could, sometimes we made the Native Americans sick. And sometimes us showing up on the scene meant the bunch of Native Americans died, unfortunately. Smallpox, I believe, was more dangerous. Like, I had chickenpox when I was a kid, and I survived. It was itchy. It was not pleasant. I did not enjoy it. I was pretty well covered, but I survived, right? But smallpox is a different story. Now, some people don't survive chickenpox, which is why there's now a chickenpox vaccine, right? But the majority of the people with chickenpox did survive. Smallpox is a different small story. Smallpox was more dangerous. I'll have to look it up and see how it would compare. Isn't there a more yeah, we're not going to go into other poxy stuff. All right, primary source. So primary source means this person lived back then. It's in their words. So primary source. In, eight, in 1801 to 1870, winter count by... Lone Dog. It's published by the Smithsonian Institution. It says most of this winter count was recorded on a buffalo hide by a Lakota who lived in what is today Montana. The symbols are read in counterclockwise spiral. The key tells the meaning of some symbols. So look at this. It's kind of counterclockwise. So clockwise means it goes this way. Counterclockwise means it starts here. And then it goes this way. Okay? All right. Why it matters. The arrival of the horse on the Great Plains changed the lives of the Native Americans of the Plains in many ways. It made buffalo hunting easier and helped the Lakota become a powerful people. It also made them much more dependent on the buffalo than they had ever been before. The buffalo, in fact, became central to the Plains people's way of life. Their very existence now depended on their maintaining large buffalo herds on the Great Plains. When Europeans started moving to the Plains, problems arose. Would there still be enough land for the buffalo to graze? You will learn more about these developments on the Great Plains in Chapter 18 of this book. Did you know? How did the different Plains people communicate with each other? Native Americans on the Great Plains spoke at least 20 different languages. 
They developed a special sign language to communicate. When they met people from another group, they used hand signals for important words. For example, to express, express the word buffalo, a person would raise an index finger to each side of his or her head to show horns, buffalo. Okay. Notice their fingers are pointing back, right? All right, so main ideas. Before they learned to tame the horse, most Native Americans on the Great Plains were farmers who lived in permanent villages. With the horse, many Plains people began moving from place to place to hunt the buffalo herds. The Lakota began to depend on the buffalo about 1700. They used the animals for food such as jerky and pemmican for clothing and as a covering for their teepee. They kept a record of their history by making a winter count each year. The Lakota kept a record of important events in their history with a calendar called a winter count. Suppose you had a chance to talk with Standing Bear, a Lakota Sioux. Remember Standing Bear was the kid that talked about going on a buffalo hunt with his dad? You might ask him questions similar to the ones below. You're going to use the spaces to write out the answers you think Standing Bear might give. For help, refer to the pages 96 to 101 in your textbook. Write in complete sentences. I'm not going to say they're two points each. So, I, you know what? I don't want complete sentences, but I do want to know, in what part of the Great, Great Plains do you live? Let's do this. Let's see. Which ones do I want to read? So you're going to answer this one. What part of the Great Plains do you live? I want to know what part. Okay, so I know large herds of buffalo roam on the Great Plains. How does the buffalo play a part in the life of your people? I want to know what things do they use the buffalo for okay how important is the buffalo to the plains people so you need to answer that one um why do you live in teepees i want you to answer that one and I want to know if you caught, how did taming the horse change the way of the Native Americans living on the Great Plains? I do not necessarily need you to write these in complete sentences, but I do want you to answer the questions. And of course, as always, tell me what pages you found your information on. Page numbers. Any questions for me before you get started? Just cross it out. What other questions do you have? All right. We'll be back to do the fun thing in a minute. Okay. So let me go. Let me start at the beginning again. Suppose you have a chance to talk to Standing Bear, a Lakota Sioux. You might ask him questions similar to the ones below. Use the space to write the answers you think Standing Bear might give. So whose answers are these going to be? The ones you think Standing Bear might give. Who's Standing Bear? Remember, Standing Bear was the, the little boy in the thing. So, for help, refer to pages 96 to 101 in your textbook. So, I'm going back to my textbook. And it says, Standing Bear is 11-year-old. So, I'm on page 98. 11-year-old is at a buffalo hunt with his father and other men from camp. First, the hunters ride straight into the buffalo herd to create confusion. Oh, whoops, let me back up. The Lakota. The Lakota Sioux, who are known as the Dakota, live in the northern part of the Great Plains. 
They live in the Black Hills, Black Hills of South Dakota. So, number one, standing bear in what part of the Great Plains do you live? What would you say? Black Hills. Yep. So you could either answer it as, because he says, where do you live? So I would probably say, I live in the northern part of the Great Plains. In where did they say Black Hills of South Dakota? South Dakota. What page is that? Okay, page 98. Then the next question is this What are the land and the climate like? What did they say about the land and the climate? Well, if I go back a page to page 97, it says, life on the plains, what? The Great Plains are made up of dry prairies that cover much of the Middle West. The prairie is a flat or gently rolling land covered mostly with grasses and wildflowers. Summers can be extremely hot and winters are extremely cold and it lacks rain. How could we answer that? I know you don't have to answer that. How could we answer it though? dry can I say prairie because that was one of those blue words dry prairie can you move it yep hang on sorry I didn't realize I was totally off your screen I live in a dry prairie that lacks lacks water is that what you were saying Summers are what? Hot. Summers are muggy. hot. Did it say muggy? No. And winters are chilly. hot. Is it chilly? Cold. Ooh. Cold. Right? I mean, they're saying negative, wasn't it negative 80? Five below zero. Yeah. Summers are hot and winters are. Um, this is not wrong one. No, I'm not. <coughs> what are the land and climate like? I just said I asked you one that I did not say was an assignment, and you're still gonna write it. I live in a dry prairie that lacks water. Summers are hot and winters are freezing. And we found that information on page what? Not 99. 
Not 101. 97. Now, the next question says this. I know that large herds of buffalo roam the Great Plains. How does the buffalo play a part in the life of your people? How would you answer that? Okay, so the buffalo helps <coughs> helps us have food or gives us like helps us get food. And what was the other piece you said? And build our homes or the teepees and cover our teepees. Okay. Now, what page would that be on? 99. Why do you live in teepees? Why did they say they lived in teepees? Well, they said something specific. You're on the right track. They said something specific. Because remember, they said they used to live in lodges. Ah. Perfect. We live in teepees because it is easier to move them around. <coughs> What page is that? Ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. Okay. Yes. Okay. What answer did you have? They live in teepees because they didn't have materials. It, well, was that what they said, though? No. They said... Oh, wrong page, too, isn't it? When it was time to move, the teepee was folded up and loaded onto the travoy. A travoy was a sled-like device used for carrying people. What page is this? 97, not 99. And belongings. The Plains people used travoys to carry buffalo meat home after a hunt. Um, here it is. For thousands of years, Native Americans who lived on the plains of the Middle West lived mostly in villages. The villages were usually located near the rivers where there was plenty of water for farming. The plains people lived in lodges. Lodges are homes made up of logs covered with grasses, sticks, and soil. Did they always live in the teepees? No. They only started doing the teepees when they started following the buffalo and they gave them an easy way to take down their house and move their house and put their house back up again. So, I know you have horses. When did, where did the horses originally come from?
Spanish what? Owners. Spanish owners. We're just going to write Spanish owners. One second. What page was that? 97. 97. Last but not least, how did taming the horses change the way of life for Native Americans living on the Great Plains? How did it change? but where did they come from? They ran from their Spanish owners because it says on there that Okay, I don't disagree. I just put down two words because look at the time. I'm running out of time right now. That was the only reason I was trying to hurry because I wanted to make sure we got to the fun thing. Are you good with that? Yeah. But I don't disagree with you. If we were taking the whole time, we would totally take the whole time. Okay, so it's easier to move stuff around. What else? How did taming horses change the way? So it was easier to move things. What else? Yep, they could. So, um, taming horses, so they carried people, right? Either on the horse's back or in the travoy. Yeah, so they don't have to walk. They said it was a long way. Don't have to walk. Yeah, so they used them in their hunt for the buffalo. That totally changed because what did it do? Were they farmers anymore? So one of the big changes was they stopped being farmers, right? So when they, ta when they um, tamed the horses, they stopped being farmers and they just hunted the buffalo. Uh, what page was that on? 97. Was it just 97? Maybe 97, 98. All right, so this changed from being an assignment assignment to being a participation. So put your name on it, hand it in, and then I'm going to grab my supplies. So I grab my supplies. Let me show you what you're going to do. This is your steam challenge for today. This is your steam challenge for today. You, I'm so sorry. Yes. You don't want to do the fun thing? Because I can give you, you can write a summary instead. Do you want to write a summary? No. You want the steam challenge? Okay. So, uh, paper passers are going to pass out 10 sticks. One, two. Not right now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not using the broken one. Nine, just leave it. We'll catch it later. Or you can catch it right now if you're that close. Ten. So there's my ten stir sticks. You, they're coffee stir sticks. You are going to make me a teepee. You have 10 stir sticks. We have thin yarn. We have thick yarn. You don't need a gob. You do need to make sure it's standing like a teepee. Good luck. Then, once you get your teepee to stand upright, like whatever, um, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This one looks like it has nine, so nine or ten. I don't know what you're going to need. 
Then you're going to get a piece of paper and you're gonna cover your little teepee with your piece of paper. Now, before, wait, before you cover your teepee with your piece of paper, now you're probably gonna wanna get an idea of how big it is and how big of a piece you need. But before you stick it on, however you're gonna stick it on, I want you to do some designs on the outside. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the Native American teepee um, that I saw had um, designs on the outside. It kind of reminded me of this, except it was a little bit different. So what you can kind of do is you can kind of so my plan is think about the school year so far what symbols might you want to design draw on your tp on the outside obviously you'll kind of have to be strategic in making sure that your tp outside shows does that make sense because you're not going to want it to cover up I got questions in the house. We'll take questions in the house, then you're going to get busy, schmizzy, because you're going to... Okay, so I'm going to nuts and bolt this. You're going to get 10 sticks. You're going to use your 10 sticks to make a teepee. Um, if you look at the picture, it looks like they tied the sticks together at the tippy top. You have a thin yarn to work with or a thick yarn to work with. Please be respectful that we have more than one person in here. You can have a chunk of paper to go around your teepee. When you put your chunk of paper around your teepee, then um, before you stick it on or whatever, you're going to um, draw some designs on it. And the design should represent you so far this school year. Yes, you'll need to put your name somewhere on the outside. I have some questions. Okay, so the storm came, and uh, did you have to make two? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you have to make two? Every person gets graded for the TP they turn in. Mm -hmm. It's not, I work with three of my buddies, and the three of us turn in one TP. We're all turning in our oh. own TP. And then you can take it home, and the people will be like, oh. <gasps> this and you're like it's the tp i made and then you're like what well, well tell me about it and you're gonna say what the lakota sioux used tps when they were hunting buffalo and then you can tell them the story right moving on Mrs. Heimelmar gave me this paper. This is Mrs. Heimelmar's string, so whatever I don't use goes back to Mrs. Heimelmar. All right, I'm going to get you going. Otherwise, you're not going to have time to do your job. Well, you have until the big hand is on the one, five after before we would normally stop what we were normally doing. Now, do you have the rest of the day to work on it? Yes, it'll be due tomorrow, which is why I was trying to get you going as quick as I could so you had as much time as possible. Any other questions before we hand out the supplies? Okay, talk to you later. Bye.